I'm Haley with Polly's Pet Shop, and today we're going to be building a bioactive vivarium. So let's go. All right. So what is a bioactive vivarium, and why should I have one? <laughs> Those are often common questions that we get here, but they're super interesting to learn about. So the whole point of a bioactive vivarium is to replicate your reptile's natural ecosystem. So what do you do, and how do you get that to work out? Well, that's where a bioactive vivarium comes in. You see, the way that they're set up with the live plants, your live reptile, and your live cleanup crew, it all works together as an ecosystem. So your reptile is going to live its life. It's going to poop. It's going to shed. He might even leave some crickets or food in the tank, which is going to mold or get old or anything to that nature. And what's going to happen is that cleanup crew, those isopods and springtails, are going to go in behind him and actually just eat away all of that. And what they poop out is actually going to be fertilizer for your plants. And your plants in return will then provide a lot of shade and hide and cover and foliage for your reptiles. It all works together to become an ecosystem. <laughs> it may take a while to get it going, but once you do, it's the perfect reptile tank. So in this specific tank, we actually have a custom 3D built background that was made here in this store. It's actually super easy to do. And while we did it ahead of time, if you guys wanted to see a video on that or learn how to do it, just let us know in the comments and we can totally show you how we did that. So the first thing that we got to do for this vivarium is create a drainage layer. This goes by many names like hydrovols or LECA. The purpose of this layer is so that soil doesn't just sit in water because that can cause a lot of problems for your bioactive vivarium. It can start killing off you know, your cleanup crew, which we'll talk about even more, and it can give your plants root rot, and overall it's just a really big mess. So you gotta make sure you have that drainage layer in there. So after we have our drainage layer inside of the vivarium, we're gonna go ahead and put a layer of screening down. That's because if the substrate doesn't have that screen protection, it's just gonna go straight into the drainage layer, and that kind of retroacts the point of a drainage layer in the first place. So we gotta make sure that we put a bunch of screen down, make sure you get all the corners just to make sure that the substrate is not gonna go into the drainage layer. So after you have your drainage layer and your barrier layer made out of screen, the next layer is gonna be your substrate. Now the substrate is probably the most important part because you gotta make sure that it's safe for your cleanup crew as well as beneficial to the animals and plants going in your bioactive vivarium. Here at Polly's Pets, we make our own. We usually will use reptosoil or cocoa bark. We want to make sure that you also have some bark to actually break up. So we can use forest floor or bark blend, things like that. Also about 10% sand, just to create some air pockets for the plants and their roots, as well as moss and leaf litter. And that's just going to serve as hides and foods and all the fun stuff for the cleanup crew. So once you have that mixture already made, you're going to go ahead and throw it in. Make sure it's deep so you can plant your plants, and that's pretty much it for the substrate. So after you do the main substrate layer, we're going to do two more small layers. The first one's going to be just of some moss. Here we're using sphagnum moss, just because it's widely available, and I find that springtails typically favor it. After the sphagnum moss, we're going to go ahead and add in our layer of leaf litter. This is super important because until your bioactive vivarium starts getting a lot of waste, a lot of poop, a lot of the crickets, a lot of shed, a lot of waste like that, the leaf litter is going to act as food for your isopods. It's also going to act as hides for your isopods. So if you have any sort of reptiles that are going in here that eat bugs, like crested geckos for example, if they see your isopods hanging out, they're going to eat them. And that's a pretty expensive meal. So you want to make sure you have plenty of leaf litter in there to hide them from really any sort of reptile that you're going to be putting in there. And once you do that, it's on to decoration. So this is my favorite part. We have quite a few different types of plants. I'll go ahead and list them off for you. We got some bromeliads, we got a couple of ferns, some mosses, some pothos, dracinia. Um, we even have some crotons in here. As well with the plants, we're also going to throw in any sort of rocks or driftwood. Um, that we want to do. Again, this is all up to you. It's your tank. Make it as personalized as you want it. So, since we are using live plants, we need to make sure that we have good, strong LED lights. It's also important to make sure that you research what kind of plants go where. For example, this fern right here doesn't require that much lighting, so we can put it in a bottom part of the tank that gets less light. However, this bromeliad requires lots of light, otherwise it'll get super leaky. So we're going to actually put this guy up higher in the tank and closer to the LED lighting. 
While you're researching what kind of lighting your plants need, it's also important to research what kind of plants are safe for your vivarium. For example, if you have a omnivorous animal inside your vivarium, you can't put any sort of toxic plants inside of there. However, if you're putting something like a green tree python or a snake of some sort, so it's not really going to bother the plants, you're often okay using some other mildly toxic plant that they're not going to ingest. However, it's also important to note that if you do choose to have toxic, even mildly toxic plants inside of your bioactive vivarium, you need to make sure that you're feeding your reptile outside. For example, crested geckos will eat crickets, obviously. If you leave your crickets inside the bioactive vivarium and they feed on the toxic plants and then the lizards were to eat those crickets, that toxin can be ingested through the crickets themselves. So if you do choose to do different types of plants, make sure you do research on what's best for you and your reptile. So now that you have your vivarium set up and you know what reptile is going in there, it's time for the most important part, which is the part that makes it bioactive and self-sustaining, which is going to be the cleanup crew. Now there's two different parts to the cleanup crew and both are just as important as the other. The first is going to be springtails. These guys like to hang out in the moss area. If you choose to add carbon, they typically will hang out in that area as well. What springtails do is they eat mold, which is super, super, super important because especially if you're keeping any sort of tropical animal with your misting, with your live plants, with the drainage layer, you're going to have mold inside of your tank. It just happens to the best of us. So the springtails play a super important part because they actually will eat the mold inside the tank for you. Next up with the springtails, you're going to want some isopods. Isopods are basically vultures of the bug community. They're going to eat dead poop, they're going to eat shed, they're going to eat dead crickets. If the plants on your leaves start to die, they're going to start eating those leaves and they poop out little fertilizer for your plants. It's going to be safe for your reptiles. So it all becomes one big ecosystem and one big cycle. It's important, again, to know which sort of isopods are best for your reptiles. So some of my favorite isopods are actually going to be a mix of a lot. Here at Polly's Pets, we actually sell a lot of mixes, which are really fun because you get a whole bunch of isopods mixed in, and you don't have to stick to one kind. One of my favorites is going to be dwarf whites. These guys are itty bitty tiny, you don't really have to worry about them getting eaten, and they also hang out in the bottom layer of your substrate, which is super important because most isopods won't hang out there, and that part doesn't really get cleaned or aerated that often. So dwarf whites are super important. Another one of my personal favorites are dairy cows. Now they can get quite big, so again, you want to make sure you have a ton of leaf litter, um, but they look like little cows and they're super, super cute. <laughs> now, unlike the powdered oranges, who look super, super vibrant and stick out a lot, there's also powdered blues and powdered purples. Now, while they are bluish and purplish, they blend in very well with their environment, so you don't really have to worry too much about them getting spot or eaten. Haley, I have a question for you. Hi! What is that weird white stuff in that tank? So <laughs> this is actually broken up cuddle bone, which is like a brick of calcium essentially. It's actually used for the isopods because they need lots and lots of calcium. Perfect, thanks. I just remembered another really cool fact about isopods. What is it? So isopods are actually crustaceans and from my understanding they actually don't have lungs. Now, they do live on the land, but they breathe primarily through water. Again, to my understanding. So, these guys need a very moist environment, a lot of moss, and a lot of misting down. Otherwise, they'll just suffocate and dry out. So, if you do bioactive, make sure you keep it moist for your friends. <laughs> Thank you. So, this is the final take. I really love it. It looks super good in person. I hope it looks just as amazing on camera. But other than that, guys, this is how you build a bioactive vivarium start to finish. So if you guys like this video or you want to see more videos about reptiles, birds, lemurs, and just animal education in general, go ahead and subscribe, like the video, leave comments, and have a good day. <laughs>